The Latter-day Disciples team is pleased to announce our fall conference, Awake and Ascend the Mountain of the Lord. This virtual event will be held on November 3rd and 4th. The theme of our event is exploring the temple as a pattern for our mortal journeys and eternal ascension. We are excited to look at ancient and modern temple types and their patterns to more deeply understand the significance of temple worship and the application of temple living in our mortal journeys. In addition to this, we will be sharing an exciting announcement during the Saturday sessions you won't want to miss. Our speakers include Kevin Ball, Valerie Hudson, Nicole Hansen, Margaret Barker, Rob Kay, Corey Judson, Cameron Mayer, and Farrell Pickering. We hope that you can join us. Please go to latterdaydisciples.com slash events to register now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Latter-day Disciples podcast. I'm excited to be joined today by Matt Jepson. Matt is a water and natural resource attorney with a passion for wild places and wild things. Over the last few years, Matt has been strongly prompted to temporally and spiritually prepare for what he feels is ahead, as well as share with others those things that he is allowed to from what he receives. He is optimistic that we truly can overcome fear of an uncertain future with preparation. Matt, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. So can you please tell us a little bit more, like just go a little bit more in depth from your biography. What was it that got you interested in preparing temporally and spiritually and also interested more specifically in signs in the heavens since that's our topic today? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we, going back real quick, just for a minute, we lived in Kansas City. We were living in Jackson County, right, for 14 years, actually, just about 14 years before we came back here to, we're now in Lehigh, Utah. And um, it was, it's interesting because I lived out there all that time and didn't really think a lot about the second coming. Uh, had great opportunities, great, met great people, had great uh opportunities to serve in the church and things out there but um i'm i'm mean, in a way i'm grateful for it because now that i feel what i feel you know the the i'm so anxious for the things that uh i know are ahead but uh he put us there for a reason and then he brought us back for a reason and we've been back for seven years which is an interesting number um but uh we came here and i spent four years just the first four years just playing in the mountains and the desert back home because I grew up here and you know I was just they put me in as scout master which is like a terrible idea on their part but uh, uh, leadership part here because it was just an excuse for me to, to be gone and after four years um, I had a really rough trial hit me and, um, and that was in uh, 2020 which is you know a common year for a lot of people I think it seems like uh, and uh, went through that trial and, and like the heavens were closed and it took me a month of just, you know, it, I usually have had through my life, just the ability, um, the grace, which we all have to, to have the heavens open and, and have direction. I just didn't have it this time. And um, at the end of those four months of just trying to do all the things, right. Being in the temple all the time, just, uh, trying to be diligent in my in my studies and my prayers and really just pouring out my heart I had a, a moment that I've always kind of related to the brother of Jared and it was it was a brother of Jared moment being chastised for three hours for failing to call upon the name of the Lord which interestingly happened after four years at the seashore right when they got to where they did and um, and he spent maybe four years playing on the beach <laughs> I don't know but uh, at the end of that I had a very very powerful experience um, and direction and what to do in that trial and then just a really clear message that he had things for me to do and and i needed to get closer to him and i needed to stop just playing with the trinkets of babylon right just you know just just messing around with worldly things and so that was really the beginning it was the end of 2020 um and then into the beginning of 2021 i started having really strong promptings to prepare temporally my family uh, very direct promptings. And so that's where it started for me. And I, and again, Brother Jared, building barges, right? That's how it felt like it was. It was a temporal task that the Lord gave me. And he was just having me 
build barges. And and I am a researcher, really nerdy researcher. So when I start, it's like I I just dove all the way in and I did the food things and tried to find ways to make it easier. And I've shared those a lot with uh, people. I won't go too far into, into depth of that, but um, anyway, we we went through this process in the ward and then in the stake, and I started having really strong um, both impressions and then some really powerful experiences that led and guided that uh, that process. And it was in that context, really, that led me to wanting to understand, recognize the signs and the way that things happen. Because, you know, I, I reasoned with the Lord that I wanted to be able to um, warn and prepare um, accurately, appropriately. The, the, uh, I was put into a, a calling in the sake over emergency preparedness on the stake I counsel. And so we were doing all these things to prepare our stake. And I really felt like he wanted me to ask to, for guidance to prepare the right way, right? And so, and, you know, from my family all the way up to, to that responsibility, and those, those, the things that we did in the stake ended up being recorded, and, and now they're in a lot of places, and, and we just try to share them. But that was the context for me, reading the promises, and, and the promises are really clear, and, you know, I don't, I won't dive into them right now, but I feel like maybe tonight would be good just to say a little bit before I, I go into some of what we're going to talk about directly here, but, but I knew that, that there were promises that I could understand and recognize, just like all of us, we can recognize the signs of the times. Um, and that helps us to be able to be prepared. Like, in fact, we're supposed to, we have an obligation, in the words of, of Elder um, Conkey, to, to recognize the signs of the times. So, so that really, for me, um, began as I was doing temporal prepar preparedness and, and helping others and starting really trying to work on spiritual preparedness um, and get closer and closer to, to the veil, right? Just as the brother of Jared was, uh, I was more and more prompted to, to ask to recognize the signs. And I started getting some answers and, and seeing some things here and there that helped us prepare for an earthquake here and prepare for um, uh, other things that I think are, are ahead. But, um, then just very recently did I have this experience um, related to uh, the eclipses, which was a really powerful one, but kind of one in a series of answers. That's awesome. And I so appreciate that testimony of, um, you know, that the Lord kind of took you on this journey and put you in this place where your heart was softened enough to accept the truth that we can know the signs and that we can be prepared for that. You know, I think that that's one of the areas where we collectively tend to have a veil of unbelief is that we've been told, well, no one will know the day and hour. Yeah. And because of that, we've interpreted that to mean like, don't even, we don't even need to try. Like we shouldn't yeah. be trying to interpret the signs where, which is um, completely contrary to what the Lord says. Right. Cause the Lord yeah. expressly says, my elect will be watching for me. Yeah. They'll be looking for me. They'll be looking for the signs of my coming. And that will be part of what distinguishes those who are prepared for him spiritually and otherwise, and those who are not. Um, right. so I, I love that he kind of tutored you on that fact. He, yeah, he really, I mean, he almost compelled me to ask and to look and, and yeah, I love these, these verses. If you don't mind, I just want to share just a couple of these just the words, because I think that they're, I love the recipes in the scriptures, right? And what he says, just as you said, in, in Joseph Smith, Matthew 138, mine elect. So he uses like, these are like the things that we need to be to be able to recognize them. And then the promises, right? He says, 38 and 39, mine elect, when they shall see these things, they shall know that he is near, even at the doors. Okay, so we need to be his elect, and we can know. And then Bruce R. McConkie, part of... Uh, using the other and that's the fig tree analogy right and then we know about the woman in travail of labor those who treasure up his word will not be deceived as the time of that glorious day nor is the events that proceed to proceed and to attend it the righteous will be able to read the signs of the times so we'll be able to read the signs of the times will not be deceived 
shall see all these things, shall know. The children, um, to the, those in darkness will come suddenly as a thief, but the children of light who are not of the night, that day will not overtake them. They will recognize, in uh, Elder McConkie's words, the signs as certainly, and then he's using that analogy from the scriptures, as certainly as a woman in travail foreknoweth the proximate time of her child's birth. So the promises are so direct. I just so people don't really understand, as you said there, that there's both an obligation and then there's a promise to grab a hold of. If we are seeking to be his elect, his, his disciples, treasuring up his word, being righteous and are, and are being filled with light or children of light, those are the parts of the recipe that are on our side to do. And then we shall see, we shall know, we won't be deceived, we'll be able to read. Um, recognize it as certainly as a woman in travail for no approximate time, which you just recently foreknew. And you know, like you look at the whole nine month pregnancy, that's a pretty small part of that where you recognize how close it is. So anyway, I really think it's important. And this is for me, like what I'm going to share today is a spiritual experience. It's not a, it's not a research thing. It's, it's, it's actually didn't happen that way. Um, but it is about it, it, we should approach this, I guess, as I feel it, just the same way that we approach any gospel principle. We have a promise. We should approach it spiritually. And, you know, I guess one other thing, sorry to, to go on with this, but I think that you have people that are totally disbelieving and they just think, oh, no, don't start looking for it, like that it's asking for a sign or something like that, or they just see so many people that fall off the deep end. Uh, pursuing these things so they do nothing and then of course you do have people uh, which we all are in some ways that get a little bit caught up in the novelty the you know the, the kind of the speculative nature or just approach it a little bit academically and I think that there's a little bit of danger there too or at least we're more likely to be disappointed or not have a certainty um, and sometimes be deceived right if we if we approach it without the spirit we approach it with like all these data and facts and and that goes into it. And, and you know, it, I'm not saying that it doesn't, but it really needs to be a spiritual pursuit and it, that's how it works. And then we can have that certainty. And it's not that he's going to give us everything, but he'll give us what we need to be prepared and what we need um, when we desire to warn others. I totally agree. And I'm so glad you bring that up. Um, there are so many ways to get off the straight and narrow path when it comes to this topic, like there uh, seriously. And even when you are focused spiritually, you know, there is the tendency perhaps to become overzealous yeah. and to begin attributing things to yourself. And, and, you know, there's a sense of pride that can come with it. Yeah. Um, but it's totally true. I don't know if everyone like is aware, but there is a psychological, um, aspect to studying the end times, um, where it's an adrenaline rush yeah, and it can become addictive the same as anything else. And so like, I have friends who, um, uh, very innocently, you know, they, they want to be, they want to be prepared. They want to be aware. And so they start studying things and then you start going down these rabbit holes and the rabbit holes never end. And that's not bad in and of itself. I think it's important for us to be aware of some of the conspiracies and secret combinations and, and things that are going on. I think that's important in as much as it's helping us to turn to the savior. Um, but that alone, that pursuit can become addictive. Yep. And so that's really important for us to kind of be, be cautious about and to be, um, self-evaluating our own intentions to make sure that we are focused on the Lord and we are focused on his glory, because at the end of the day, all of those things aren't really going to matter. Yeah. So. Yeah, I totally agree. And I, I, I think that um, it, it is, is something that we're supposed to approach. And we're going to talk, I think a little bit about this, this period of time where we just have this added ability. The Lord is making it easier for us to become spiritually refined, is what President Nelson said. We had this added in this compensatory power, which I've, I've shared with people here recently, and, and it actually ties into the, the eclipses, but we have the right, and we are actually told to seek the best gifts, right, earnestly. And two gifts that are so important in this to me are the spirit of prophecy, 
which is available to every member um, and to every individual, uh, and the spirit of discernment. And those two companion, I, I really feel like they're companion gifts that when we are seeking to understand and we, we're trying to stay, keep it as a spiritual pursuit, and we're asking our Heavenly Father, please help me to not be deceived. Please help me ha to have discernment to recognize the signs that I need and to not, not get off course and to not get too far and to stay especially centered on spiritual uh, sanctification and, and drawing closer to the Savior, because that's the most important part, right? And, and it's a good measure to me, like, am I, does this matter, as you said, right? That's a really good thing. Does this, does this matter? Is this helping me warn, prepare, and deliver? Those are the three words I always am given in prayer. Help me to warn, prepare, and deliver brothers and sisters, you know, and deliver has multiple meanings. They all kind of do, but, and if it's not, then maybe that's not the center focus. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I hesitate to bring this up, but it's just kind of timely. And so I'm feeling like perhaps this needs to be shared. Um, but in relation to this, this topic of, um, being cautious and intentional in our pursuit of truth, you know, I, I had some experiences recently that just made it really clear to me how invested the adversary is in deceiving us. Um, even and perhaps especially those who are who are very interested in pursuing more light and knowledge. Um, and I think that one of the things that we might forget sometimes is that the closer that we come to the Lord, we're going to grow in that light. And the adversary is going to try to increase the darkness in proportion to that. And the fact of the matter is, is that, um, until basically you have your calling and election made sure you are subject to deception, you can be deceived. And, you know, I know some wonderful people who the Lord loves deeply, but who have been deceived in one way or another. And so I think, I, I don't know, I don't know if that's relevant to this discussion, but I, I think I, it is. I, I know the Lord wanted this, this part of this has been in my mind all week. And I know he wanted us to talk about this. So I'm really glad you did. And I, I think that it really is both sides. You know, you, we, we need to be believing and we also need to stay yoked to the savior. And, and that's, you know, that's, that's how we stay on the right path with this. And it really is, you know, I see the same thing. I see people spinning off both directions, just head in the ground and then head in every <laughs> every cloud they can be into, right? Just going all over the place. And, and I, I, uh, it's always, it's always something that we have to make sure we're checking ourselves and make sure that we're more than anything, right? That we're just, we're centered on Christ. We're excited about this because he's coming back, right? Not, we're not excited about this because of a train wreck. We're and, and, not and at we all. all have that, <laughs> we all have that just like fix, like just, you know, it gets so exciting because, even though it's born from, from wholesome things, we're like, this is awful, right? As Ezekiel 9 says, which we'll, I think we'll talk about it tonight, um, th those that sigh and cry for the abominations, like we just feel this is so awful, like clean it up, please, you know, mm -hmm. but, and, and we want to we wanna see that. And so anyway, we can get, we can easily get distracted, but um, if, we're, if we're really focused on what this is really about, the, the return of the king of kings every generation before you know when he came the first time and even way way before they look forward to his coming with gladness and when we're focused on that and we're focused on really his coming to us which will be before he comes in his glory for everyone that is looking to him we know he appears more than three times i'll say before he comes in his glory and um and so our you know, our focus being coming back into his presence and being able to recognize the signs so that we can help others to be ready for their, their second coming, right? They're, they're, they're uh, re-entering his presence. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, at least for me, helps me stay a little bit grounded. Absolutely. Yeah, my friend Herrick has a saying, he says, never run ahead of the spirit. You know, we, we get so energized, we get so excited, um, but we can't be overzealous. We have to stay balanced and the Lord will lead us along at the right pace. Yeah. Um, so Perfect. yeah, so important to stay rooted in him. Okay. Transitioning just a little bit. 
Um, so we wanted to talk tonight about some spiritual insights that you've had with regards to the eclipses, um, both the those over the continental United States, past and future, and some eclipses over the Holy Land, um, and some interesting parallels that you found in that. And for those of you who don't remember, back in 2017 in August, uh, we had a transcontinental eclipse <clears throat> starting you know, above the Northwestern side of the United States and, and going essentially all the way across down through the Southeast side. And, you know, I'm in Idaho. So we just happened to live in the path of totality. And I was working at the time at a corporate headquarters for a company and, you know, they, they had everyone go outside and I'll be, I'll, I'll be honest. I was totally, asleep to anything related to the last days at the time. Like I had some subconscious stuff going on and that was about it. So I totally didn't appreciate it at the time, but I did have the blessing to be a witness of the total eclipse that occurred. Um, and it was such a cool experience to just be outside and then all of a sudden have it be the middle of the night and to hear crickets chirping and to like, just such a unique, usually once in a lifetime experience. Although for some of us, we might be fortunate to have more than once in a lifetime. So um, all that said, can you share a little bit about your story about the 2017 eclipse? Like, did you see significance in it at the time? And then when did you start to see that this was this was more than just like a cool nature moment. This was really and truly a sign of the times. Yeah. So I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that, Megan? I want to make sure. Yes. That Looks great. Um, so that's that's a picture my son took with my camera of in Roberts, Idaho. So we went up there and we saw it um, also. And I did not understand it. I, it was interesting because I was like, oh, we're like at 90% here in Utah. Should we just watch it? And all my kids, all three of them, all my three boys, they said, no, we want to go see it. And I just felt like it, we should go see it. And, and so we all just loaded up and we went up and uh, we watched it. And it was such an amazing experience. I didn't know why. I felt like, oh, this is it's probably some sort of sign of the times, right? But I didn't, I did not understand at all um, what I do now. And I still know that I have a lot to understand. But but it was an amazing experience for us. Uh, really, really cool to see it, just the way we felt that we recorded it. And I've shared that with some people uh, and and felt amazing, felt really cool, did not understand it. So I'm gonna go back here. So then past seven years, right? Mm -hmm. And um, And I, uh, we, like I mentioned, we had, I'd had some promptings and some, um, some answers to prayers relative to the, some of the different things that were ahead. Like, and everyone who knows me very well has heard me say when China invades Taiwan, because I know that that's something that's going to be important because I've had that. I had some some really cool experiences related to an earthquake and time without power, but this one actually happened when I was and and this happens a lot. Probably something you can relate to, but and a lot of people can. But this one actually happened as I was sharing something with someone else. I always seem to get the the best, clearest revelation when I'm trying to help others or share something with others. And that's how it began. I was actually talking to, and I had seen some of the things about the eclipses, and um, and I was sharing with, with a friend uh, a little bit about what I knew about the eclipses coming. I was showing them the kind of the path of the eclipses, right? And so I'll pull this up here. I was like, yeah, it's interesting. If you look at the, the path that the eclipse, the eclipses the United States take, um, you'll see that I've got to find one that has this right image on it here but so really really quick oh go know, ahead when you're yeah. talking about the eclipses so the first one was this one in August yeah. of 2017 what other eclipses are you specifically referring to yeah 
So ignore all of these scribbles on this, except the reason I want to pull up, I thought I had a picture that just showed these sites here, but you have, if you see here, um, the 2017 eclipse that you just referenced, right? We just talked about right there. And it goes over Adam on Um, And then we have another eclipse, total eclipse in 2024. And then I'm, uh, that goes from Texas up, you see it going over Kirtland, Camorra, and up into New England. Okay, those are the two total eclipses. And, and I'm gonna show you this one, but then I'm gonna make everyone try to ignore this, this partial eclipse, which is a 90% eclipse um, that goes from Oregon down through Texas. Uh, I was showing him some of those and on the screen or on the, the image that I showed him, I, um, I was, which was similar to that one, except it didn't have some of those words on it. It did have the word tab on it though. And I was showing him where it goes and, and he says, what's tab? And I said, well, I, in that image, I had seen actually on a, a, a different religion, so a, a podcaster from, from a, a different faith had shown it. So this is like a symbolic thing. And, you know, it is a sign from the Hebrew language. And I, and I was like, Put it in the back of my head that was the thing I needed to look more at. Like, what did it mean? And there wasn't really much in that or what it meant. But, but I he asked that question, what does that mean? And I said, you know, it's it means something about the last and a couple of things, but I need to go and look at it more. And so I did that. As soon as we stopped talking, I had this opportunity to go and and open some things up. And um, and it I cannot describe the experience that I had for the next hour and a half uh, with words. It it was amazing. Um, it was not research like I do research. I do research, and it can take me. You know, I go weeks and days and weeks, and I really dive into things. This is not how this happened. Instead, the Lord really just he pulled me from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. On this word tab, that's where it started, and and He started showing me things that He wanted me to see for myself personally to understand what this pattern meant what was happening with these two total eclipses the 2024 or the 2027 or the, i'm sorry the 2017 and the 2024 eclipses and in the i'm going to pull this back up here but the first thing that he showed me like suddenly right in front of me i'm looking at the talmud and um shabbat 55a this is like put in front of me and it says that the tab means the end of the seal of the Holy One. I was like, wow, that's the end of the seal. What does that mean? And I, and I started looking at that. Um, and, and the next thing came, it, it means that it's a, it is a signature of Christ. And we're just talking about the tab right now, right? And I think it's easiest to kind of go through this. Let me share this again here to pull it back up, but not that one. That's not the one that I wanted to do first, but I couldn't find the one. There we go. Um, just with the first path, okay? So here, you can see that, right? So I'm, I'm looking at this, these two, these two eclipses, and I start seeing all these things about the Hebrew sign of God. The tab and, and and all these things about what it means. I, I find that in the in the Old Testament, the word tab is used to speak about a mark, right? So, so they have this word seal that's in my head, the end of the seal, and then something about a mark being placed on on people um, to protect them, right? So you see it about Job references references this mark. He says that he has this tab on him um, to protect him. It's actually, it's interesting that we sign things, you can sign things with an X and it's a legal signature. It, it is used as a signature. In fact, in some ways in, in the locations, the signature for uh, Christ, but representing him, his name. And then, then I started seeing things where it represents judgment. And, and the next scripture that came to me that just popped up in front of me was Ezekiel 9. And I'm going to pause here in case I'm running ahead of anything you want to say, because I just go, go, go. 
No, you're good. I love it. I think it's really, really interesting. First off, I love that the Lord led you to the the Hebrew. I believe it's a letter of the Hebrew yeah. alphabet, the Tav, the Aleph and the Tav. Yeah. And um, the last letter, I believe, of the yes. Hebrew alphabet. And so just the symbolism of that, I found so much meaning in studying Hebrew um, as far as giving context for the scriptures, I think that God speaks that language. That yep. sounds maybe a little bit obvious, but I think he definitely uses it in the signs that he gives. And I think, you know, that interpretation of the end of the seal of the Lord, uh -huh. um, you know, all of a sudden we're lining up with John the revelator and yep. the book of revelation and, and what he saw and it's interesting because I know people who felt like the eclipse had some significance um, long before I felt like it did. And there were some people who even postulate that that was the beginning of the tribulation. I, I personally disagree with that wholeheartedly. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to kind of hear what your yeah. interpretation of that is. Um, but yeah, I mean, and, and the fact that this was just a download for you, that it was, it was not you, it was the Lord teaching you. Um, I think that's so awesome. That's all. Yeah, I and that, that really, that's the part I just really want to, you know, I hope that that's really clear because it was, it really was that way. And these things just came, it, it was just beautiful for me. It was, then the spirit was so strong. It was, my heart was, you know, jumping out of my chest and it's something that, you know, some people had seen the tab and things. So it wasn't like, you know, I reveal this to you for, you know, for you to tell the world. It was just for me. It was for me. And he, he has us share things, right? When we, when we get them and, and I've had very distinct promptings to share them. This is nothing about, this is nothing about me, right? It, it was a really spiritual experience for me. And, um, and this is just kind of as best as I can lay it out. This is how it, it, it went out. It, it came, um, to me in rapid fashion, right? The marks intended to ward off before Ezekiel, ward off danger and provide protection. Job makes a passionate plea for a hearing before the Almighty. And he says, here is my signature, here is my tab. That's the literal interpretation. Job probably made his mark, at least figuratively, in the form of the cross, like the X. Um, and, it, and it interestingly landed me right, and this ran me all the way through Revelation. But before it did, he guided me to Ezekiel 9. Okay, so Ezekiel 9, 4, and there's some interesting verses before it too, but in 4, the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all of the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Okay, so this verse, and that mark is tab in, in the Old Testament. It's speaking to tab directly. Um, and so there's this period of time, right? And and he says, um, another verse here before I, I move on beyond this. Um, and then from there, it gets pretty hairy, right? And to others, he said in mine hearing, go after him through the city and smite. Let, you're not, let not your eyes spare, neither have you pity. Slay utterly old and young. I just going to skip a little bit. This is some pretty bad stuff. Um, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. Hey, okay, I need to get out of Utah, but I'm not supposed to get out of Utah. Begin at my sanctuary. And this could be really, and it is, it's this whole sign is made over the entirety of this promised land, um, the United States. Then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. Okay, and then you start having uh, awful things happen um, there in Ezekiel. From there, though, the Lord took me to Revelation, right? And, and these are some verses that we're familiar with, but for me, it was like opening up the book of Revelation in a way that I had never understood it before. The sealing of the 144,000 in, in Revelation 7. I saw four angels standing the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds, right? Um, and they're told, touch not the earth yet, right? So there's this period of time where they are not yet to reap or, uh, or to, to do the destruction that they do on the earth. There's this period of time where they, they don't before. But then after that, because I'm going to, I don't want to do this other part yet, because I think it's important to go look at the world, the other side of the world, and just focus on tab before we 
we move past that. But then from there, you go to Revelation 9. And it was commanded that they should not hurt the grass or the earth nor any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God on their foreheads. That's verse 4. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Okay, so after this period of time where these where the servants of, of God and those that sigh and cry for the abominations being done are sealed in their forehead, comes this time of torment for those that are not. And it's interesting, too, that when I, I skipped here, um, it's hard for me to, to do this in real time because there's so many parts to this for, for me and in my head. But the um, at the same time as that seal is being made, you have the seal of the devil, right? The Satan is putting his seal, his mark on, on individuals. And so there's the verses in Revelation that say that, that he goes about, and he, um, in Revelation 13, he had the power to give life to the image of the beast. He causes both, all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Here's his counterfeit mark, is what this is. The adversary saying, well, I got my mark. Everyone come and get my mark can't buy or sell unless you have the mark in the name of the beast um, or the number of his name. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, 666. So, so then you have basically, you have both sides putting the seal on the foreheads of people. And you have this statement that it begins at my sanctuary, okay? So I'm going to back out of this. And we have that, that, that pattern being formed right over seven years okay so the 2017 and then the 2024 and then we look and see what happens next that there's a three and a half year period of time and then this occurs the same sign of the tab which has which is symmetrical and is a beautiful sign of the tab and uh, i didn't get into this but there's i Part of what I was led to were all these uh, scholarly documents on, on the sign of the tab, you know, sometimes being a cross, but more often being on its side, um, more like an X like this. But this same pattern then happens over the Middle East. And it happens three years after the pattern is finished in the United States, but then it happens over a seven year period of time. 2027, passing over Mecca, 2034 passing over Medina. Okay, it's 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 amazing. It's really interesting. And if you did the odds, the math odds on on one of these patterns uh, being you know, separated like that in a seven year period, there've been 15 total eclipses in the last 150 years um, over uh, over North America, this side of the world. Um, and uh, the last one was in 1979. Um, I looked at some of the patterns of them. They're all just kind of all over the place. These two patterns, I know both. I, I could say I know because it, you know, it's it's clear to me logically. But it, even if it wasn't, I know spiritually that the Lord intended and intends these two patterns to represent the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the Tav, the end, judgment, and the uh, the protection for those who have the mark. Um, the seal in their forehead. We talked a little bit about that, but you know, a lot of that has to do with the temple and, and, and our our covenants and, and being one with the Savior. But then, for those who do not have it, um, verse after verse and citation or, or quote after quote that he was showing me spoke to judgment and separation. Right. So you see that those that didn't have that mark. Um, those that had the mark were spared and those who didn't were, were subject to this torment. There was a separation that occurred. We know President Nelson has said the time is coming where the, the, uh, the wicked and the righteous will be separated. And he meant physically, but there's this, this period of time. And so that sign being made where it was first over the United States. And it's interesting, this pattern here, I'm going to pull up another image here. And then second over 
the, the Middle East and these sacred sites there. Um, the first, which was in the Middle East, is last to have the tabs drawn over them. The last, which was the Gentiles in North America, is first. And to me, what he was telling me was that judgment comes, and, and we can see this, right? This is, this is supported in, in other places, but judgment comes first to the Gentiles. And uh, you know, I think that all consuming calamity is going to affect everyone, but there is, there is something to that pattern. Um, I'm gonna pull this up here. And you have to ignore the second part of this, but let's just take that step back now and look at the whole world. If I didn't put this on here, I'm gonna to have to send it here real quick because it's an important one. While we talk, I'll pull it up. Um, and send it here if I don't. I do have it here a little bit, but oh, there it is, right there. So ignore the left right now. Just focus on the X um, that is made over the United States, and then the X that is made over uh, the Middle East. There, the first is the last. The last is the first, and that's just related to the the tab and the timing of the tab. And then we're going to talk about another layer of it but I'll stop there for a second. It's so great. And I think one of the things that I appreciate so much about this, um, this revelation that you've received is that although we don't really dive much into um, timelines on the podcast either, um, the podcast, the, the timelines that I have res that have resonated with me actually line up pretty well with what you're talking about. So I mentioned earlier that there are some people who feel like the 2017 eclipse was, hold on. It's okay. Um, who feel like the 2017 eclipse was the beginning of tribulation. And I disagree with that, but I do believe that it could have been the beginning of a period of preparation yeah. where the Lord was saying, you have a certain amount of time left to prepare yourself spiritually and to determine whose side you're going to be on. Yeah. And isn't it interesting that it's seven years, right? We just, you can think right. of Egypt, right? You think of the seven years of fatness of, of preparation that we're given. And it was the same thing here. And we're seeing a lot of people um, where I'm at and I'm seeing it more and more different places, people preparing. And first, a lot of that happened temporally, but that gets into the next thing that he showed me. And, um, and uh, and I won't dive yet, but um, but yeah, I totally agree. That was that was a it was both a warning. It is interesting that when when it happened, the the greatest natural disaster that has hit the United States in terms of just damage and and dollars happened. It began that day of the eclipse in 2017. Um, it was it was that hurricane right that that hit uh, Texas, and it was actually it spawned it. it was created in the ocean that day, even though it hit two days later. And I think that that's interesting. But I feel just like you do that it was a it was a warning, and it was the beginning of this period of time. I'm, the sign is being drawn. The sign is not was not and is not completed. Uh, it was being drawn, and, and um, there was a little bit of a shock, just like I think the uh, COVID was, and some other things that happened. We had a little earthquake here, which I think was was a something that was a bit of a warning. Um, we had a fire that helped us prepare that almost took our home in this whole neighborhood. And that was part of what we live in a special place. I told you this a little bit beforehand, but woke up a lot of people. Um, it didn't wake me up. I was just like grateful my house didn't burn down. I, I wasn't, I wasn't there yet, but, um, but there were, there's during this period of, of preparation, there's these warnings, but they are nothing, right? Mm -hmm. they, they, the sign has not been made. And when that sign is completed, I think that things, and I, and I don't know, he did not, I love that you don't do a lot of um, timelines because I don't, <laughs> that is not my thing at all. It's more about mm -hmm. being spiritually prepared. Um, mm -hmm. And he gave me this, you know, not for a timeline all the way to the end, even though, you know, there's dates attached to it, but it is mm -hmm. about spiritual preparation and, and, and knowing, recognizing, especially just as you said, more important than what happened, what, uh, than what happens and what the tab signifies in terms of judgment. It's knowing that we have this period of time and it was the next thing that he gave me. And this was really, really neat to me how he did it, that, um, that we can become sanctified and that mm -hmm. the veil is thinner and that it's easier for us um, to, to be able to get close to him and to be ready. Right, 
Right. And I feel like a lot of the people that I know, um, their spiritual awakenings have been 2017 or later, you know, like 2020 obviously was a big year for a lot of people. And I find it interesting that it was about three and a half years after the eclipse that COVID happened. Um, but I mean, I definitely agree that this is a time that the Lord has given us to prepare, to make choices and to align ourselves with one side or the other. I think perhaps something, you know, in my limited study of, of possible timelines, one observation that I've had that maybe we don't discuss very much is that there is scripturally more than one seven year period. Um, and it depends. I think it's kind of an overlay of three, of three, seven year periods, actually. Um, and this is one example of two, seven year periods where we're talking about, uh, seven years of preparation and seven years of famine or destruction or tribulation, um, such was experienced by Joseph of Egypt. Another example is Isaac. And when he was laboring for he thought Rachel, <laughs> right? Yep. Seven years. And then he got Leah and then he had to work an additional seven years before he had Rachel. And so in my limited study, I believe that there's actually three, seven year periods and that the, and that there's, there's seven years of preparation and then two, seven year periods that have some overlap of about three yep. and a half years. Yep. So I, I think agree. that goes along. It actually goes along perfectly with with these eclipses because it ends in 30 in 2034 yeah yeah and i don't know and i i, mean, I want to make sure that it's it's clear that i'm not declaring that i think that the savior comes in 2034 um i i do think it's very interesting when you look at that 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 uh time frame um and uh and i i i think that and i wouldn't be surprised if um I'll be astonished because of the what it is and what it will be, but I wouldn't be surprised if any time between 2030 and 2034 he would come. But but I do think it's really important and really interesting that that, that same sign is being drawn over both lands, um, both of these holy lands. Yeah. Well, in an observation that I had too, um, you know, we talked about the Gentiles and the Jews and the first shall be last, the last shall be first these areas also represent where the Lord made covenants. Um, you know, Adam and yep. Enoch, Adam all the way down to Enoch was in the Western hemisphere. Yep. And that's where the covenant was originally established. And then from there with Noah, it transferred to the Eastern and yep. it was re reestablished a second time. So you have the first as last and then the last, the first last, <laughs> second yep. last was with Jesus Christ and, and him re reiterating that covenant and then again, the last or the first, I guess, in the Western Hemisphere with Joseph Smith, um, opening up the way for that covenant to be received again. So there's a lot of ways that you can interpret that scripture about the first should yep. be last and the last should be first. And these eclipses seem to be um, hinting at just some additional ways that the Lord will fulfill that prophecy. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the first and the last is a, is a pattern, right? Um, we know that, uh, and I'll get into some of this about his name, but, but yeah, it, it can, it can happen more than once, just like the seven years can happen more than once. Mm -hmm. Okay. You ready for the next layer? We're ready. Bring it. Okay. So this now, um, now, and, and, and some people I had seen this, I had not seen this. Um, I know that some of what he gave me in the meetings, which is the most important part to me, uh, was what it was the most important part generally most substantive but some people had seen the sign and it, I when I looked at the, the whole thing and I saw that sign of the tab and I just went through this almost an hour of just and this is a fraction like I said I, I always feel like I just can't do it justice especially because of how it felt but even a lot of the content that um, that I was given and, I, and I've just done a little, you know, I've done a video on it to kind of share some of it, but I, I can't fully capture it. But then, then I saw this and I looked at this, and I'm like, this has to be something. And, and it was beautiful for me that he gave it to me so directly. He could have just showed me something somewhere where 
someone had found what this represented. Um, but I love that he gave it to me in the way that he did because it was it made it so clear to me what he was showing me. I looked at that and I'm like, that's an A. It's a sideways A. And I do a Google search on sideways A Hebrew, something like that, right? And then I see this thing come up, the Aleph, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And I just felt it through my whole body when I saw it. And, and, and you see even this, like you'll see what's circled here because I was showing something when I did this uh, separate. The Lord keeps his, his, his design, his, his sign clean in this. Isn't it interesting that there's another partial eclipse up here, but it stays perfectly out. If you look at that dotted line, you'll see it stays perfectly out of the United States where it begins. That's where that solar eclipse begins. And I don't think that it has significance here. But you have this partial solar eclipse, this 90% this, um, eclipse that runs down here and forms the Aleph. Okay, it, it forms this sign that is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And um, I'm going to zoom in here on this if I can. Okay, and you see, oh, not too much. You see, and hopefully you can see most of that there, that the Aleph actually, not only is it this perfect exact shape that is being drawn of the United States. It is often depicted on its side. And this is the Paleo-Hebrew version of Aleph, just like the, the sign of the tab was. It won't be what you'll see in, in modern day, but this is the one that's relevant to those biblical times. And I see this. This is one of the first things I saw. The letter itself connotes first oneness, unity, uniqueness, or strength. And it, again, was this and some other things that I saw, and it just hit me so strong and so clear that this is what the Lord intended. Zoom out of that. It is what he intended to be shown. And it's interesting too, and I just, this more than what is logical, just was given to me um, in words in my mind, that it was intended that this be a partial eclipse because it does not apply to all. The Aleph does not apply to everyone. The tab does. And what the Aleph is uh, to me that is being drawn in October of this year is a symbol of this opportunity to achieve oneness with the Lord, to, to be sanctified. It is this window of time, let me pull up something else here, where we have an opportunity to, um, let's turn this off while I find this, to be sanctified uh, and to overcome. And it's interesting because before he had shown me this, he had been teaching me about this compensatory power. And um, Elder Anderson in 2022 said, there is a power that is unique to this generation. Essentially, he said, and it doesn't just fall upon you because you're part of this generation. You have to seek it. You have to ask for it. President Nelson said, he's making it easier for us to be, become spiritually refined. He said, between now and when he comes again, he'll bestow you know, great privileges, blessings, and miracles upon the faithful, his mightiest works, all these things, this heightened ability to come back into his presence and to become, to overcome the world. And that was the other talk, right, that that was in, uh, in, in October of 2022. This opportunity to become yoked to the Savior and to have the seal on our forehead. So that when that happens, when Ezekiel 9 and Revelations um, uh, 9 happen, we are, instead of subject to judgment, we're, we're, we're granted protection. And I, and I don't mean to say that the Lord told me that there's going to be nothing bad that happens to those who are united with him. But what, is, what I do know is that this window is that time, that compensatory power that Elder Anderson spoke of, and President Nelson spoke of, which Elder Anderson secretly spoke of in an earlier talk in more detail about quickening of mind and spirit and body and things that are available to the saints and, and to all those who will come to the Lord during this period of grace before that sign of judgment is made, uh, that, that they're the same. They're referencing the same thing. That's amazing. And it's so beautiful. And it's so the power of God and, and the pattern of God. Um, 
you know, I think that sometimes someone might look at these things and say, oh, you're speculating a lot. There's nothing, you know, yeah. there's, there's no evidence to suggest this, but the Lord says that he gives us patterns so that we won't be deceived. And the Lord is that perfect justice and perfect mercy. And he delays judgment in the hopes that we will repent. Yeah. Um, and so I think that it, I think it perfectly fits that pattern. So I'm curious to know, Matt, you received this beautiful revelation, these incredible patterns, seeing the significance in these, you know, these signs in the heavens, these signs of the times. How has this changed your personal preparation? Like, is there more urgency? Is there more intentionality? Are you traveling to go see the second eclipse? That's not necessarily related. I'm just curious. Yeah, I I am not unless I have a strong prompting to do it. Um, I would love to see it, but that is going to be a game time decision mm-hmm. because I know what that means. And that I, like I said, I don't know that that means that something bad happens on that day. I it, it we enter a season that is that is the a sign is being made and we enter a season of judgment and I and I and I do know that um I know what that means and I believe that things are going to get worse so no I'm not um unless I feel like I should I am going to go to this partial eclipse and I feel what I felt is just empowered actually and I feel to share more than anything more than the judgment part the LF right? I feel to share with people, like, I know that he is giving us this window of grace, the window spoken of in Revelation, touch not yet the grass or the trees until they're sealed in their forehead. This is period of grace. Joseph Smith talked in depth about it. Orson, Orson uh, Pratt talked about it until they're sealed in the temple of our God. And I feel especially directed to be in the temple as much as I can. Uh, a lot of what it, a lot of the sanctification happens both in the work that's done there and and being there just being physically there it's interesting to me how many people have felt prompted you know president nelson said be in the temple more than you you focus on the temple is what he said more than you ever have and for me that has been being there and then trying to to have the temple pass through me as i pass through the temple as uh, mm-hmm. elder maxwell eloquently stated but I felt to be there, and I felt an urgency, like you said, to overcome, to to understand what President Nelson was saying, and what I think is the most important talk of our generation in October 2022, overcoming the world. He was talking about being prepared before things fall apart, and he's spoken to the urgency, right? He said, time is running out. He's, he's talked about how uh, in the coming day, it won't be possible to survive spiritually without the constant uh, influence and companionship of the Holy Ghost. He's been more clear than people realize, but it's an invitation and it's also direction that we have. He gave us an apostolic blessing to overcome the world. He he told us, he urged us, and you know, he called upon us to be this people that are ready to receive him. And so, yeah, I, I feel very, very strongly this need. Um, and I'll say that the last one of the last or an additional layer that that um I was given about this. Uh, also spoke to the same thing and and i'll show you it in just a sec here unless you had something else you wanted to hit on that um no i just i just wanted to say first off that i appreciate that and um that i hope people will choose now i guess choose now to repent choose now don't delay it doesn't matter like we're you know by the time that this airs we're going to be about six months out from that last eclipse um it you know it said that it comes on april 8th which coincidentally is the monday after general conference will be held and it's two weeks before passover and i believe that those are those jewish holidays are appointed times of the lord um and that they they have something to do with the lord's calendar and his timing and Regardless, regardless, if that day comes and goes and nothing seems to change, um, I hope that there has been enough shared in the spirit in this conversation that we all choose to take seriously our repentance and to not delay and instead to 
to use that grace that you mentioned, that grace period. Um, It will come to an end. It will come to an end at one time or another. And the only way that you can be sure that you'll be ready for it is if you're doing everything you can right now to come to come unto the Lord. Yeah, yeah and, and it really is, it is all about him and it's all about being yoked to him. And I, I, um, I won't be surprised at all if there's nothing that happens on that day. I know what the sign means uh, and I know we're entering a, a different season when that happens. And this is a period of grace. And just like you said, it, it should be something that we take advantage of. The veil is thinner. I, I can witness that the veil is thinner than it's ever been. And that, that I, 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 I think there's a good possibility that between now and April, that things maybe do get worse to help people in this grace period. Um, just like we've had these, these situations, these things happen that were warnings. But I, 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 in the end, it's going to have to be about choice, right? And coming, coming, to, uh, coming to him. And letting go of the world and being able to say thy will be done with nothing held back and being able to really trust him and and not hear Satan who says, if you say that, you'll be as Job, but instead see and recognize and feel, consider the lilies. I have you. When you let go, you get power. When you really trust him and when you let go of the world, um, you you get power. So this just really quickly here, this, when, when I saw both of these then all of a sudden i started seeing everywhere in scripture and in um you know there's five thousand times in the old testament when these two are used together as a secret way to to symbolize christ and this is the last layer i think well there's one more if you if you want about your but we'll we'll zoom out and look at the, the globe again one last time with these two signs but but um i started seeing things like this everywhere um Jesus, the left tab, the first and the last, Alpha and Omega, the sign being drawn over the earth of Christ. It, in the end, it represents Christ. And there it is, right? Just all over the place. I was just seeing these everywhere of this, this sign. You see it in Judaism. You see it in Christianity. All these people being just prompted, in my mind, to, to look at this, to look at these signs, um, what they mean. And to think of Christ, ultimately, that's what it's about. It represents Christ. It is his mark. It's his signature. And he puts his seal, and this is, this is the later version of that, but that's the left in the tab again. Um, he puts his seal on us, just as he secretly did through the Old Testament. He's secretly doing now for those who will have eyes to see and will, will really look. And so we zoom back out now and we look at, um, oh, I, one other thing I forgot to mention. Notice also the sign of Tav in, in facsimile too, right? In the Pearl of Great Price, right there in the middle, in the middle of the mountains, which is the navel. And remember in Ezekiel 12, it said, or in Ezekiel 9, it said, it will begin in my sanctuary. Um, and so that's that's an interesting discussion there that uh, won't get too into um, in the interest of time. But when we look again at what this is, Alpha and Omega, the first and the last being drawn across the earth and into these in these two holy lands the lord is is showing himself he's showing the beginning and showing the end there's so many layers just to this part alone and and interestingly we know that the earth is a urim and thummim right and i didn't know one of the things that came to me later that urim starts right it starts with the first letter of the hebrew alphabet is aleph thummim is tab and the earth is receiving its mark of the first and the last. And there's a lot of layers to that as well um, with the earth. Uh, but you'll see it here a little more clearly, Urim and Thummim, Aleph and Tab, right? The, from the, the stones in the breastplate. But uh, layer upon layer, and these are, you know, these are just some of them here, but uh, it was such an amazing experience to me. And I say, I always, I always feel when I finish discussing it, I always feel like, I'm sorry, Lord, I did not, I didn't do it justice, because the way that it felt for me was just so much more, uh, so much more powerful, and just so much more than what I can really relay, but I, I have no interest in trying to convince anyone of these things, because of the logic, or the, 
you know, the academics of it or just the, the chances. Those things are they're, they're, they're relevant in helping us recognize it. But in the end, I really think people need to approach this sign as they do all of the signs spiritually and ask him, is this, does this have significance? If so, what does it mean for me? Because we, we have to approach him with the right, um, the right purpose, right? For me, I really wanted to understand so that I can be prepared and I can help warn others. And he's given me opportunities to do that. And I know he does that for everyone that has desires to participate. But when I can witness that when we ask to understand and, and we ask for the right reasons, He'll help us understand whatever it is we are to know. And for this one, just as you said, Megan, the most important reason for understanding this is to recognize and to be, to come, approach the throne boldly, right, in Christ, knowing that this is a period of time where he wants, and he's inviting us to be sanctified, coming humbly, personally, and meekly, because we know that we're fallen and, and um, we're not yet redeemed, um, but, but um, or we've not overcome you know, the, our fallen state, some of you may, I'm not there yet, but, um, but knowing that, that this period was given and that we're supposed to understand it so that we can take advantage of that uh, blessing and that invitation and even that direction. Amen. Absolutely. And I think it, it bears repeating too, that signs are given as a way for us to recognize true messengers and true messages from the Lord. And it is inconsistent in my mind to think that he would not be pouring out as many witnesses as we are willing to receive. So yes, please don't believe us because we said these things. Please take it to the Lord. Pray, get your own witness. Um, choose to engage with the Lord, believing that he will respond to you, believing that you can receive um, and maybe you'll receive a confirmation of this. Maybe you'll receive something different that you need uh, for you and your family and your own preparation and your own understanding of the times that we live in. But uh, regardless, Matt, I so appreciate you joining us and sharing this beautiful, beautiful revelation. This is so sacred. And um, I appreciate your willingness to share and to be a true messenger for the Lord. Thank you. Well, thank you for what you do. You reach a lot of people and it, uh, I know it makes a difference. It helps a lot of people. Thanks for letting me come and run my mouth off. <laughs> Anytime. We'll have you back, I'm sure. Great. Sounds awesome. Are you just reading the scriptures or have you learned to search them? If you haven't switched to using scripture notes, you haven't discovered the power of a tool designed for searching the scriptures. This incredible tool allows you to pull together search results from the standard works, apocryphal texts, and freedom documents into a collection you can study from, digging deeper with instant references to Blue Letter Bible, the LDS Citation Index, Webster's 1828 Dictionary, and more. You can even import your gospel library notes as well. Sign up now for a free trial at scripturenotes.com.